Hey Internet, I'm Steve, welcome to Raffo. One of the most fundamental questions in the Cosmere is how can I power X magic system with Y investiture? You've got a bunch of stormlight but want to awaken, or you've got a lot of breaths but need to steel push, or you have to forge something but you're not on cell. Brandon refers to this as magical hacking. And apparently there are ways to do it. A couple we've even seen. A certain grumpy ardent is proceeding to not be dead on Roshar. But the one we know most about is called compounding. The use of allomancy to power ferrukemi. I've got a couple videos that go into depths on these systems, but just to quickly review, allomancers can burn certain metals as a key to access a wealth of investiture from preservation. Ferrukemists can redirect the flow of their own innate investiture and store that in certain metal mines, then access that stored investiture later. To emphasize, the source of each of these investitures is different. One is coming directly from a shard, and the other is from the individual. The source and relative power level are aren't the only differences between the two systems. We learn in Elantris that investiture has certain frequencies and pulse lengths which must correlate to a specific key, be it aeon shape, metallic structure, or a phonemic utterance, in order to enter the physical realm. That's how bronze users, allomantic seekers, are able to differentiate between what metals someone is burning. The rhythm changes. However, this focus slash investiture thing isn't necessarily a one-to-one -one relationship. Aeons have both a primary and a secondary effect. For example, Aeon Ihi, <laughs> which creates a destructive column of fire, is also used in Aeonic equations to trigger additional sequences. So it's possible for the same key to have multiple applications, multiple frequencies, depending on the intent. I mean, Hemolurgy. With allomancy and ferrochemy, the same metal is used for sometimes wildly different effects. Brass suppresses emotion allomantically, but with ferrochemy it stores warmth. Copper hides allomantic pulses, but also stores memories. Tin does senses, but differently. So it's not necessarily the metal itself, but how you use it that determines your result. The investiture signatures are distinct, even though the same metal is used. Now we get to compounding. Put simply, compounding is powering ferrochemy with allomancy. If someone has access to both allomancy and ferrochemy for a certain metal, they can charge that metal with a ferrochemical store and then burn that metal mind with allomancy. The investiture contained in the metal has been keyed to the ferrochemical attribute, so when it's burned to access preservation's power, the ferrochemical attribute is what comes through. That can then immediately be turned around and stored in another metal mind, which in turn could be burned for increased effect. This creates a functionally infinite supply of whatever ferrochemical attribute you're storing. An analogy to explain. Ferrochemy is like a hand crank generator hooked to a rechargeable battery. Whatever effort you put in, you get out as electricity. Allomancy is like a gas-powered generator. Minimal effort on your part just putting in the fuel. The fuel is burned and much more electricity is produced, though technically none of it is stored. Compounding is like hooking up a motor to the gas generator and using that to turn the crank. Burning the fuel now charges the battery, which results in 10 times more stored electricity than could be produced by just the hand crank. So if you're a steel twinborn, meaning you can burn steel to push metals away from you, and can tap steel to access stored speed, burning a steel mine would give you a supply of ferrochemical speed that you did not need to store. When you burn it, you don't also push metals away. The investiture gets overwritten as ferrochemical speed. You're burning a metal with allomancy, but getting ferrochemy because of what was stored. This is how, such spoilers, the Lord Ruler kept himself alive over his thousand year reign. Atium stores youth, so he would invest youth into an Atium mine, burn it for a supercharged blast of the past, store the compounded effect into a different metal mine, and then slowly tap what he compounded to keep himself at the same age. Eventually this would get less and less effective. Your spirit web knows how old you are, so his spiritual aspect would pull so hard that compounded youth wouldn't be enough to prevent the aging process. But it works over the really long, short term. Could you spike youth out of someone? You can't just do this with any metal mine, though. 
like I talked about in my ferrochemy video, the metal mines of one ferrochemist can't be accessed by someone else. They're basically encrypted to your identity. If you try and burn someone else's metal mine, you may feel that there is an investiture reserve there, but you won't be able to access it, and you'll end up with the normal allomantic effect. If there's no other person's identity blocking it, though, like an unkeyed metal mind, compounding has some functional limitations as well. You can only do it if you have enough metal to burn and you have to be able to ingest it somehow. You can't burn a giant steel ingot. Additionally, certain things aren't going to be effective, or at least not a good idea. Compounding copper or aluminum might not really do anything, and compounding brass would just result in spontaneous combustion. I'd certainly go for a little zinc or bronze, and compounded chromium would be interesting. Go ahead and leave a comment as to what compounding ability you'd most enjoy. Please subscribe and hit the little bell to keep up on my videos. Now that we've got all the magic systems out of the way, these should be a little less research intensive, so I should be posting a bit more regularly. Follow me on all the social medias, and as always, read and find out!